What's up, guys? It's your boy, Jmecha here, coming at you with another deck tech. This is my Rafello Storm list. Uh, first of all, big shout out to Briar Moss. He's been putting in a lot of work in his deck list. Uh, when we did the um, Season 5 uh, countdown stream, uh, he wanted to play some... He was already making decks. He was already just, like, making a bunch of decks. And one of the decks he showed me was uh, this deck. We play on, we play on the stream, and... I thought it was crazy. It was ridiculous. This for Fellow's deck. Um, for Fellow's obviously makes tons of mana, but he had this other card that I'd never heard of was a uh, Benefactor's Draw, which uh, says untap all creatures until end of turn. Whatever creature blocks an opponent, uh, whatever creature an opponent controls blocks, draw a card, and then you draw a card. So basically, it was like a green ritual that was cantripping, and I was like, this is nuts. And his list was pretty cool, but he didn't have any storm cards in it. I'm like, this is a storm deck. You should be playing storm cards, and the only green storm cards hunting pack. But he didn't like it. I don't know for whatever reason he doesn't like it. So I took the deck. Um, after a while, I started taking the deck, and I've come to this weird conclusion that I liked. So we're just gonna dive right in. Let's talk about it right now. Let's go with the mana base. Kind of the worst part about this deck, I think. It's twenty three lands. It's way too much for any sort of combo deck. But because of Rafellos, you really want like a large amount of force, and you always want to see him. So. I actually have 19 forest, and then a couple of red sources. Interesting, a little different. I have one mound and three uh, mog hollows. Um, really important to have untapped lands whenever you want to be a combo deck. So these are like the best things we got. Um, they really didn't make red, but I mean green's obviously good too. Like playing, have to, have to play this for like a turn two where else is kind of shitty, but whatever. But you need it, and later you can have uh, them away when you don't need them. Um, go to the twos. Rafellos, um, the namesake card of the deck. It's not always necessary to have this card, but when you do have this card, it's pretty bonkers. <laughs> it is real. I mean, it's it's really dumb. It's really it makes so much mana so quickly, and with some of the other tools that we have here, that we can do so much more mana than it should. Uh, time and need. Find the other repels. Repels is so important that you need tutors. So this actually looks for it. it's, it's the only legendary card in the deck for a while. I had um, uh, Verdoroth, which like makes saplings out of kicker, but it was just so slow and so awful. So I just like cut it. That's all I, I never wanted to play when I drew it. Um, Nature's Lore, uh, tutors for force comes right into play, untapped, which is really good. So. Our very heavy forest deck. We want as many forests as we can. Nostalgic Dreams, along with Wildest Dreams, they're both um, sort of like card draw. Green doesn't have a lot of card draw, so you need to like replace that with like ways to recycle your deck, I guess is the word of card. And this is really good because it's a two drop, so it's a really important combo you often need all your mana. So you can just, when you draw excess lands or just like excess of other cards you don't need, this is perfect. Wildest Dreams is a little better when people are killing your Rafellos or anything else. You've already like burned your stuff, but you don't have anything really going on yet. So this is kind of a way to just like rebuy that all. So so basically Wildest Dreams is a good like before setup, and Nostalgic Dreams is a better while I'm going off sort of card. But they both functionally do the same thing, just in different ways. Benefactor's Draw, like I said, it's kind of like a green ritual plus a cantrip. A lot of times, you can just, if you don't have anything to do with turn two, you can just burn it. Just like cycle. It's a cycle. You just cycle it. It's great. Um, a funny thing about the little other text where it says, whenever a creature in opponent controls blocks draw a card is, a lot of times, I'll cast this card multiple times a turn. Especially if I have like an Assaulted Dreams, Wildest Dreams kind of thing going. I've cast this card at least like four to five times in a turn. And if they have creatures, because this happens all your creatures, you have to be careful about wrong your deck because that could happen and you'll instantly lose so i've actually had that happen to me once i was just practicing and yeah I, I cast this card about six times and then i attacked and they had like three or four creatures and they blocked and then i drew my deck and i lost <laughs> or something it was ridiculous it was... so you got to be careful about that um another good part about it's an instant speed so sometimes you can actually go off your instant speed because hunting pack is also an instant uh okay the three drops, this is the craziest part. This is the divergent part between mine and Brian Ross's deck is Fervor. Gives you all your creatures haste. Uh, what does that mean? Well, 
The downside is that you have to have red man in your deck. It's like really a detriment. Sometimes it's really annoying. But the upsides, I think, far outweigh the downsides. The first first upside being that Rafellos, you can use that immediately. So you don't have to really wait a turn to hope that Rafellos survives. Because there's not like a ton of like we could play protection spells, but they're very narrow and they're not as useful. The second part about Fervor that's good is that once you go off with one of your uh, seven quote unquote storm cards, you could attack in the same turn, and that's really big because it's really the only way that the deck actually wins is by attacking. We could add like a fireball or something to do R and red, but I think that this is better. And I never actually really get the twenty mana. It's really odd to say that it has to be like some crazy circumstance. And by now, people are like aware of Rafellos and the power of Rafellos, so getting to that much mana very quickly is really hard. So this like just enables some like really broken starts, and even you can even like sandbag your Rafellos before if you have a fervor in in your hand just like play the fervor on three and just kind of wait till um you're about ready to go off and you can just like play your fellows and just immediately start going when you have a fervor that's like one of the really important cards of this uh harrow um it's kind of like this trade-off it does two things either one it finds the mountain that you need to cast fervor or it takes away the mountain and replaces them two forests. And that's what's really that's a really important part of it. Because once you start going off, all you want are forests. You already have a fervor down. So you just want to trade them off a of forest. Also, again, another instant speed card, so it's kinda of helps on the uh, instant speed going off uh which will happen. It will happen. Uh Journey Discovery just a one up. I kinda of threw them in here. Um one of the problems of this deck is that it doesn't draw a lot of cards like other combo decks. You're really leaning on Harmonize, which is the next card I'm going to talk about. It's right here. We'll talk about all the ones. Harmonize is really good. It's a green concentrate. You kind of just need this card. There's no other way to really draw cards. You can play Explorer, but I found that like it was a slow... It's a worse cycler versus just like you need, breath, you need like a bunch of cards sometimes. Journey is kind of like the same thing. For a while I had a Tethered Gambit, but the life loss was not ideal. And it was just a it was just a divination. It wasn't like that good. Concentrate's a little better, <laughs> not by much, but it is better. <laughs> At least I don't lose life. Journey is kind of like a divination in the sense that like it does put two cards in your hand for uh, one card, but it does have the other part of um just dropping two more lands into play. And sometimes you'll use that ability. You know, you never know because this deck does have a lot of lands. And turn three, you go straight to five, and then. Maybe you could do some uh, Rafello stuff there, or just like start doing some early Wolf Briars. So yeah, I'm gonna try it out. I think it's probably worth it. It's just this is a one of, so um, we'll see how it works out. Uh, Wolf Briar Elemental is uh one of the main draws of just having a bunch of green, <laughs> green forest in your deck. Uh, Multi Kicker is pretty sweet. It's basically a big storm card. You can cast it. The best thing about cards, you can cast it on its own. You can cast it just on turn four as a four four, and it'll block a lot of things. I will do that against a lot of aggro decks. I'll just play on four. But the broken part is like, you know, making a bunch of wolves with it. So pretty sweet. I like uh it's a good card. Along with hunting pack. Hunting pack's a little different. A lot more expensive, but the payoff is a lot higher higher. Uh, even if they counter the first uh storm card, the storm cards will trigger and the rest of them come into play. Like I said, it's an instant, so you can kind of do end of turn, like for fellows, tap some stuff, benefactors draw out, and then just like play this for like four mana. I've done that. Let's just play for four guys. Like you, that's, that's the best thing about it, because they make four fours. You don't really need to do, like, eight or nine or ten, like the old, like, Tendril Storm decks would do. Like, a five. Five Storm. That's all you need. People start at 20. Four times five, 20. You're dead. The problem with this card is that, um, you kind of do need Rafellos to make it really work, but our deck is built around finding Rafellos and playing Rafellos, so. But Wolf Briar is just a little better because you can just play, make your land jobs, and on curve, it's always good. You're always going to get the more lands you play, especially great lands, um, the better it'll get. So that's that's one of the cool parts about this card. It's, you don't have to have Rafellos to play it. And I've won just by playing a bunch of Wolf Briar and I'm like, alright, can you deal with all this? No? Alright, I win. Uh, Postmortem Lunge, and there's one here, one in the sideboard. It's just kind of a way to um, recycle your Rafellos from your graveyard. It costs like Actually, mana is one of the best mistakes that Wizards has ever done. Oops. So, it also gives your creature haste. That's kind of important. I mean, you'd have to have to give it haste if you come from the graveyard. There's like no other way you can really utilize that. But yeah, it's kind of a way for the removal heavy decks to kind of just like rebuy your foes for a turn. And sometimes you just need one turn. 
Uh, let's move to the sideboard. So Briar Boss's main deck, he had a Sphinx Slimes. I have decided to put him in the sideboard. They're better when you're looking towards a longer match and kind of like grind them out a little bit. They block really well and they just kill anything, any dumb land or enchantment. Uh, artifact. There's an art. It's a complete artifact deck. So this card's pretty good against that. So just seal primordium. Um, it's more here for necro, I guess, because like once they play the necro, they're gonna draw a bunch of cards, and you can't really stop that. But at least I like, extend the bleeding a little bit by playing this early. Uh, I, I'm choosing seal over like a naturalize, just because I don't want to leave my mana up. I can just like play this on two and just let it sit there. The black decks that really don't have anything to do about that, so that's good. Or staying mostly for the mirror match. Um, killing the Rafellos is really important in the mirror match. Like whoever has Rafellos first is gonna get a clear advantage. So pretty good at that. And then the little tiny aggro decks like White Weenie or uh, Red Deck, a little like X ones, and you know it's kind of good. <laughs> I've actually been pretty happy about it. Got the offshoot again for the aggro matchups. It blocks and landfall. You know you gain a life. Kind of like prolong your game plan a little bit. And Spreading Algae, specifically for black decks, um, it's just more of a nuisance than anything. Like, it can, it's easy to play around, um, and it's especially with that Dark Ritual, then it's kind of, you're kind of, like, not doing much about it. But it's still, it's still pretty good. It's, it's a one-mana, like, Stone Rain, so that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. But I've been, like, working on this deck a lot. It's actually the other deck I've worked on the most, other than the Shonder deck from the first deck deck. I haven't been really, like, what's the word? Ugh. Inspired a lot by the cards. I think that the season is pretty good, uh, but I don't know. I just haven't had like a ton of time to work on a lot of new decks. That like you know, nothing has really popped out to me. It's like oh, you gotta make this. But this this deck really popped out to me. And again, huge shout out to Briar Moss. He put a lot of work in this deck. He actually won one of the tournaments. But you know, I had to put my own little mecha spin on it. So we're gonna run through some games and let's see how many. Creatures we get on the field all along. 